die for. Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the die for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Living Hope Agency Call. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the master schedule of a top producer. Uh, my whole thing that I learned from a mentor really early on, he said, Jamie, show me your schedule, and I will show you your results. And I didn't really understand what he meant. Um, that was just kind of a super profound concept when he's like, dude, no, literally, show me your calendar, and I can predict what your results are going to be because he had been in the business for a long time. So we'll kind of get started uh, just kind of prefacing this call. Um, really, there's three things that I've learned, you know, not just in this business, but really any business um, that you have to keep centered, you know, in your life and your business. Uh, number one is obviously your why. Uh, number two is, is this idea of staying coachable. And then number three is your calendar. So I'm going to run through each of those, your why, staying coachable in your calendar. So obviously, you know, the cheesy stuff, your why, you know, to really last in this business, you got to know why you're doing it. Um, if it's just about making money, obviously the motivation is not going to last. It has to be deeper than that. Uh, but we can also ask ourselves the question, you know, what can the money do? How could this change the trajectory um, for my family and what's possible for them? Uh, who can I help? How many people can I teach the same skill set you know, to literally be able to make money at will? And, you know, they have to be centered in your mind every single day. So that's number one. Uh, number two, you know, staying coachable. You know, this never hurts. Um, I think that a lot of us are tempted to think that if we find a little bit of success, um, then we're done learning. And I've had so many phases in my insurance career where I'm like, I got it. I'm done learning. You know, we create a good system. It works for us. We stick to it. And we never change anything. And obviously, you know, if what you're doing is working, you know, I'm not uh, telling anybody to make dramatic changes. Uh, but if what you're doing is not working, uh, my whole idea is I'd literally do anything to find out the info on um, what I could do to change or improve to make it work. Uh, but no matter what, whether you're figuring it out or not, you know, teachability, coachability is everything. Um, you know, asking yourself the question, is there somebody who's doing better than me that I can learn from? What areas do I need to grow in? Um, and there are questions that I'm constantly asking myself, you know, seeking counsel, um, really just because I'm obsessed with getting better in this business. Um, and if we're not getting better, we're getting worse. Uh, we don't just stay the same. And I've reached many points in my career where, you know, you stop plugging into calls. You stop listening to the podcast that got you going when you first started. And I'm so, so guilty of that so many times where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm podcasted out. I've heard just about everything that I could possibly heard. But you never know, like that one little golden nugget that you get from that one call, that could be the game changer that kind of takes everyone to the next level. So I'm preaching to the choir to myself right now because I understand that there's calls that I've missed. There's trainings that I've missed. Um, and I really am realizing the importance of teachability and coachability in continuing to grow. Like you can get to a certain point where you learn a skill set. It's very easy to maintain, but to like have dramatic growth, there's like a new level of teachability that happens every time you want to make a dramatic leap. And I think, you know, I find myself saying things like, you know, I got it. You know, it's all good. You know, I already know this stuff. I don't need to tune in or learn this because I already know it. And the honest truth is that, you know, if I really knew the information, if you really knew the information, we'd have everything we want in our FFL business. And if we don't have everything that we want, then we've got some room to grow and we've got some things to learn. So staying teachable is obviously key. Um, that way, you know, we can determine, you know, if we're really teachable, I guess the question is, you know, what would I give up to learn the information? You know, would I be willing to give up my favorite thing? You know, if I really like golfing, would I be willing to give up golf to learn the information? I really love watching my favorite show on Netflix. Would I be willing to give up watching Netflix for a year? You know, having that burning desire to learn that. You know, I really have a deep desire to learn simple retirement solution products like annuities. I'm three years into this business and still personally have never sold an annuity, which is crazy. But it's like, what am I willing to give up? I haven't had a level of teachability over the last three years where I'd be willing to give up some form of something in my life that would allow me to make time to watch those videos, to get good and start implementing that into my business. So whatever it is, if you want to learn how to move from final expense to mortgage protection, you know, what are you willing to give up to be able to go watch every mortgage protection video that exists 
on YouTube to talk to other people about what leads are you running? What are you doing? How does that work? How do you say this? How do you learn this? So you have to have that burning desire to grow. So number one is obviously your why. Number two is staying coachable. And number three topic of this call, our calendar. So how do we make the most of our time? Um, a question that is going to be asked at the end of your life is, what would you wish that you still had more of? More money or more time? Um, we can always make more money, but the way that we spend our time is pretty much everything. Um, the problem that I think a lot of us have, including myself, is that many times, you know, in my business, um, this is the first time that I've ever been my own boss. It's the first time that I've ever made my own schedule. And to be totally honest, most of us suck at being our own boss and bossing ourselves around. You know, we wake up when we work when we feel like it because we're the only person that's holding ourselves accountable. So which brings me back to my first point, you know, if my why is bigger than money, if my why is bigger than just myself, then you'll have a reason and motivation backed by the discipline that will encourage you to make the most out of the time that you have. You know, having a family, you know, that keeps me motivated to continue to move forward. So I think that's a, a pretty good intro to this topic. You know, we titled this call, um, show me your schedule and I will show you your results. Um, I can confidently say, again, just like my mentor I mentioned in the beginning, um, even if I didn't know anything about you, if I didn't know anything about your level of skill in this business, that if you showed me your calendar for the last 90 days without showing me the IP reports, without showing me your commission statements, I'd say probably eight out of 10 times, I could guess on average how many families you're helping per month if I can see what your business looks like over the last 90 days. And the obvious goal here, the obvious goal here is to fill your schedule with money-making activities. But obviously, you know, simple isn't necessarily um, easy. And I think a lot of us are head faking ourselves, thinking we're kind of doing the right thing, um, thinking that we're working, but we're really just busy every single day. Uh, you know, learning about FFL, growing my skill sets, watching videos, updating my website, making business cards, getting organized, or anything like that. I mean, those are things that really should be getting done early in the morning and late at night, not during prime time selling hours, not during money making activity hours. Um, if you're finding yourself doing those things during the middle of the day, if you're not dialing, you're not doing appointments, ask yourself why. And I think a lot of the times it's because we're just trying to do something to make ourselves feel busy to avoid the real work. Um, People are trying to figure out a million different solutions, how to get creative, how to avoid the work. Um, and we tell ourselves we've been working all day so we don't feel bad. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just we can tell um, if this is you, if we're seeing the needle progressing in a positive direction or if it's staying the same or if the results are getting worse. So for me, when it comes to my schedule, um, you know, I don't have it all together. Life is crazy. You know, I am uh, a husband. I'm a dad of two babies and I haven't slept in two years and life is crazy, but time blocking has saved my life and saved my business. Um, I know there's a lot of people on here who they do one call closes. I'm all about it. More power to you. I personally can't handle that. I need to compartmentalize my life and be like, this is family time. This is appointment time. This is dial time. This is that time. That's just what works for me. So time blocking is everything. Because most of us, you know, we have lives outside of selling insurance. I know maybe it doesn't seem like if you get on live dials and you see Drake on here every single day, early in the morning, late at night, but we do have lives outside of selling insurance. And in order to find massive success, you know, and learn the skill set, here's the deal. You have to live your life a little bit out of balance for a little while if your goal is to learn this as quickly as possible. So if you look back, at my first six months in the business, I didn't really have a life outside of insurance because I wanted to learn this as quickly as possible. Now you can go the other end and you can live a perfectly balanced life. You can work two to three hours a day. You can have time to work out at noon. You can cook your own meals. You can read for two hours. You can play with your kids. You can take long walks. You got plenty of time to mow the lawn, do the dishes, but it's going to take you longer to figure this thing out. You just have to understand that if you want to figure it out quickly, you have to have a life a little bit out of balance for a while. If you're okay with figuring it out slowly, you can be perfectly balanced and you can be the guy who does your first hundred appointments over the course of a year. 
or you can be the guy who does his first hundred appointments over the course of five weeks. Who's going to figure it out faster? Person who obviously condensed the time frames and got a little bit obsessed. So living a life out of balance, becoming obsessed with the business, you're going to learn it faster. You can add the balance back in later. And that's kind of like the season of my life that I'm in is starting to add some of that balance back in. But during the time blocks that I do have, I'm completely obsessed and focused. And that's all that I'm doing. So I'm in no way saying that like these other areas of your life aren't important um, because those things are still a huge part of my life. Uh, but I have to be very strategic with my schedule. Um, my calendar, it controls all of our lives. My calendar is like what well, controls my family's everything when it's it's my calendar. And that's not me trying to be selfish because I also have learned I need to take time for my family first to make sure that I can have control there because before it can get out of control. And now it's like, because my calendar so much controls my life, um, there was times when my family was getting the crumbs and there are seasons when it's important. If you're about to get evicted from your house, then you got to pull back on long walks with your kids in the afternoon. You can love your kids, love your family, but if you can't pay your bills and you can't put food on the table, there's a time and there's a season when it comes to making sacrifices, missing birthday parties, all that stuff. There's a time and a season to make sure you can go to every single party. But there's a time and a season when you can be at every single T-ball game. There's a time to make sure you can pay the bills. And when you're consistently paying the bills moving forward, progressing your business, add back in some of that balance. So like I said, my calendar controls my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And some people on here, you might be like me. Um, I was the most resistant person to having any type of calendar or structure. Um, I just wanted to work when I wanted to and kind of figure it out when it comes. And that was a great waste of my time every single day. And that's time that I'm absolutely never going to get back. So in short, um, we have to learn how to schedule things in time blocks. Um, what are your non-negotiable dialing blocks? Uh, what are my non-negotiable blocks that I'm going to run appointments in? What are my non-negotiable family and personal time blocks? Once you kind of set up those blocks, um, the goal is to fill in all the other areas, all the white space with, with as much activity as possible. And then when you are with your family, when you are with your friends, when you are doing something personal, you can be fully present during those moments and not half in, half out, you know? So for me, you know, a couple of things that um, are really important to me that weren't as important in the beginning, um, you know, my wife and I transparently we're, we're working heavily on our marriage. And that's not necessarily because we're in trouble, but we saw the writing on the wall that if my family continues to get the crumbs, that we will be in trouble. So what's something I took time for? Now from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the next 16 weeks, my wife are doing a marriage you know, course at our church. It has homework. It has study. Every Saturday morning, I believe it or not, I gave up a few hours of my Saturday morning, which is crazy if you know me because my marriage is that important because now I found a little bit of balance in building my business. So every single Saturday morning from eight to 12, we get together, we get coffee, we go over our study together. We're taking those moments um, where we can get them. And then I'm building my business around those moments and making Sundays. I don't work period, but like we make sure that those are in the schedule first, then everything else I can fill in from there. Um, so that's important. Um, so I, here's a big one. What time do you wake up? Now, I'm not I'm not anybody's parent. I'm not your boss. Um, you don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. Um, there was a season where I was waking up at 4 a.m., um, but I'm in a crazy season of life where my kids haven't slept for the last two years. So um, I'm probably waking up at like 6, 7 o'clock transparently. But I'm making sure I'm working by 8. That's important to me. Um, but if you're not waking up till 9, 10 p.m., just the honest truth is you're not going to compete with someone like a Dave Witcher who wakes up at four to 6 a.m. every single day. You're just not. Um, like I said, last year I was getting up every single day at 4 a.m. Now I got two kids who don't sleep. So I'm probably awake at 4 a.m., but then I'm going right back to sleep for a second after I put a kid back to sleep. Um, I didn't start at 4 a.m. Dave Witcher didn't start at 4 a.m. It took me like 18 months to slowly work back to that time. And like I said, now I'm pretty consistent, like a 6 to 7 a.m. You know, I get up, I take care of what I need to do. I make my kids breakfast and I start my day. Uh, but regardless, just thinking from just, I don't care when you actually wake up, but just like break down, like 
how many more hours somebody else gets to work versus you when they do wake up early. If you look at somebody who wakes up at 6 a.m. versus somebody who wakes up at 8 a.m., that's an extra two hours per day, which is over an extra 60 hours per month. So that person basically gets one and a half full-time working weeks on you if you wake up at eight and they wake up at six. That's a pretty big deal. So two hours, you have enough extra time to get a full extra working week and a half over everyone else who wakes up at eight. Um, and I think it's also important that if you're you're getting started and you're really trying to get the momentum rolling, you have to be meticulous about making sure that you're pressing that green button at 8 a.m. every single day. Earlier as you get more disciplined, but setting your, you know, I, I'm pressing the green button on dial day at 8 a.m. That's an agreement I made with myself. And I'm setting my first appointment for my run days at 8 a.m. and my last appointment usually at 8 p.m., depending on my schedule. And I create blocks in my schedule. And my goal is to fill in those blocks with activity. So I typically book my 8 a.m. and my 8 p.m. first because then I'm forced to fill in the middle. If I just kind of like, oh, my last appointment's at four, well, I guess I'll be done at four. I book my first and my last because of my, I've got an appointment at four and I've got an appointment at eight. I'm going to fill in four to eight. So for me on my dial days, um, I'm doing my best to typically try to book up 15 to 20 appointments for the next 48 hours, 72 hours. Um, I always try to book up. This is just like a, a little skill that I'll teach you guys about how to make sure that you have extra time to dial if you need it. So when I was in the field, what I would do is I would dial on Thursday for Friday and Saturday. The way that I would do it is I'd call and I'd book up my Saturday and my Friday afternoon first. Okay. And I'd leave my Friday morning open. And that'd be the last thing I would fill in. So if I have a really good day, dialing at my 15 to 20 appointments, it's like fill in Saturday, fill in Friday afternoon, fill in Friday morning. Why did I do that? Because there's also days where I had bad days and I only booked up half my Saturday and my Friday night. So I left that Friday morning available for me to continue to dial so that I could book up the rest of my weekend. So I could make sure that I still had the numbers in my favor. Um, so I could have the next morning to fill in those gaps. Um, when I was still in the field selling in person, I personally loved dialing in my car between appointments. If I got no showed, but keep dialing. Um, if you're in the field, you know, some people like the door knock. I hated door knocking. So I like to dial in the car. Um, I can't tell you how many times that I got no showed or porched. Someone wouldn't let me in. So I just started dialing in the car. And today people don't show up. I just start dialing during that time instead and set, you know, two to four more appointments in the gaps that I had um, either same day appointments or for the next day. And sometimes those uh, appointments that I booked when I got no showed, ended up being the only ones that bought and they saved me from having a bad week because rather than just stopping and saying, okay, what do I do? You know, what do most people do in the white space of their schedule? And this is not me trying to be judgmental or hypocritical because this was me. Um, there was times when I was in the field, I, oh, I got no show. Let's go get some food. There's times I got no show in the film. Like let's take a nap. I didn't sleep last night. Um, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole, watching all kinds of non-business related things. I scrolled on social media, um, anything but work. And obviously if you're doing telesales, you're doing it from home. It's really easy to leave your desk. If you're married and you got family, it's really easy to get caught up doing some dishes. It's really easy to get caught up taking out the trash and mowing the lawn, having a long lunch, you get distracted doing the honey do list and you don't make it back to your desk for a few hours. Uh, but the days that I filled in my gaps with money-making activities, I've never regretted those days. I've never once regretted those days. So if we want to talk just like a little bit more practical, let's talk about like calendar, like what I'm actually using. For the longest time, I was old school and I did the uh, the physical calendar book. Okay, and I did that for a really, really long time. I finally, even though like I'm a technology guy, I finally, finally uh, switched over to where now it's Google Calendar synced with my iPhone for scheduling um, absolutely everything. I really liked the physical calendar book for a long time because I could see my gaps. I realized the reason I like the physical calendar book, I could actually do the same thing Google Calendar. Um, so I kind of keep my Google Calendar in front of me all day. It's a big blank screen where I could fill it in by the hour, by the half hour, and I can visually see all those white spaces the same way. Um, and after I book everything, it automatically syncs to my iPhone. It automatically gives me reminders, addresses, any info that I need. Um, if I'm going to drive to an appointment, if it's 
syncs to your iPhone and you'll be the address in there. It'll be like, Hey, you need traffic says you need to leave in 15 minutes to be there on time. You know, that kind of stuff. If you're working in the field or just give me a reminder, say five more minutes. So you need to call this person. Um, so my iPhone would remind me when to leave on time, keep me on track when I'm in the field, um, keep me on track with reminders. If I'm running long on an appointment, trying to wrap it up, or if someone's wasting my time saying, I got another one coming up, let's get this taken care of. Um, but typically I'd set my appointments from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. when I first started. Um, I wasn't very efficient doing a presentation. So I gave myself 90 minutes per appointment. I think my first time I ever sat down with a couple that wanted a husband's policy, a wife's policy, and then like an accidental for the family, it took me two and a half hours. First time I'd felt three applications in one home, it took me two and a half hours. So I would typically give myself 90 minutes per appointment. And in the beginning, I'd run about four to five appointments per day. So you got to imagine I was probably running 10 to 12 appointments over the course of a Friday, Saturday. Um, and then you start to get better. And in the beginning, you know, I'd get no showed in between appointment times, whatever. Um, I'd have drive time. You know, I'd get feedback from my managers on how to get better, what I could have done better. I'd recruit new agents or I'd listen to FFL podcasts. And then I started getting more efficient. And guess what happened? I started going from 90 minute slots to one hour slots. And I started getting, you know, seven to eight appointments per day because now I had more time available. And now I've been doing this for a while. So I'm a little bit more efficient and I book my appointments every 30 minutes. Now, a lot of you guys are like, okay, every 30 minutes is kind of intense. Um, there are times I can get appointments done in under 30 minutes. Most of the time it's 45 minute appointment. However, you're going to get no showed. You're going to have some that will run longer than 30 minutes. You're going to be late, but it really doesn't matter because I'll be on one that runs for an hour and a half. I'll miss three appointments. I'll call the next two I was supposed to call and they know showed me anyways. And then I'm back on time for the other one and it didn't really matter. So it all works out. All that I care about is I had opportunities to talk to clients. So last couple of things, let's just talk about the difference, very simple difference between setting 10 appointments to setting 14 appointments. 10 to 14. The difference is an extra 40% opportunities to help a family that's a pretty big deal if we were to multiply that out and take it over the course of a month you know i go from setting 10 appointments twice a week so that's 20 appointments a week to 14 appointments per dial then i'm at 28 appointments a week so what is that over the course of a month that's an extra 32 appointments a month so if i'm somebody who on 20 or on 80 appointments a month, so 20 appointments a week. You get no showed by half, sitting on 40, selling half, selling 20, helping 20 families. If I get an extra 32 families, I could help an extra seven, eight, nine families. It's a pretty big deal. Like the ROI of just going from I'm gonna stop at 10 to I'm just gonna book four more. An extra 40% more opportunities to help a family. All right. Um, let's see here. What else? Weekends. Okay, working the weekends is a cheat code. I would say over the course of my career, over 50% of my entire total production has been on Saturdays. Probably 50% of the total premium. At this point, I've probably written 1.6 million in premium. Probably 800 grand of it has been on Saturday. And that's not an exaggeration. Saturdays, I've written my biggest policies. Saturdays, I've had the most appointments. If you're not working on Saturdays, you're missing out. The cool thing is, if you get really, really good at this, you become your own boss. You actually become a good boss of yourself and learn to dictate your schedule. Any day could be Saturday. Um, Wednesday could be Saturday. Who cares? But Saturday, for me, is the most productive day of the week. So if my wife and I want to go do something, we'll just go do it on a Wednesday. Or on a Tuesday, as long as I have my production numbers. But like Saturday is the day that most people are home and they're in a good mood. Um, Saturday, I like to stack up with everybody who's working during the week, especially with telesales. I mean, you can only have so many late night appointments. There's only so many people you can talk to from 6 to 9 p.m. after they get off of work. So I like to schedule as many people as I can who are working on the weekends um, and I like to take all my retired, disabled, work from home clients um, and put them on the weekdays. And I save those evenings and Saturday slots for those people who are working. 
if somebody gets on the phone with you at 8, 9 p.m. at night, they're pretty serious about their insurance. 8 a.m. appointments on Saturday are my favorite. Those people love to buy. If they're willing to book an appointment with you at 8 a.m. on a Saturday, um, they are buyers for sure. Um, I think the biggest thing is a lot of us, Saturday has always been our free day. We struggle with the idea of giving up our Saturday. Um, most people will just kind of lay around all day or go party on a Saturday. I used to look forward to Saturday so much. My wife was a teacher. We'd go to church on Sunday. So Saturday was the day we just do whatever we wanted. Um, now I look forward to Saturday for a different reason. It's like it's game time. It's like Super Bowl Sunday on a Saturday. We had to go out there and help families and everyone's in a great mood. Um, and the honest truth is, other than like a handful of important family events, I've only missed a very small handful of, of Saturdays in the last three years. Um, it's been life-changing. That's just an understanding with my family. It's weird because like we moved to a new area, new church. You do this whole thing where you're like making friends and you're like, you and your wife are like dating other couples, trying to like figure out who your friends are going to be. And everyone wants to hang out on Saturdays. I'm like, how about, how about Thursday night? You know, and everyone's like, why? I'm like, Saturday's my big day. How about Sunday afternoon? We can hang out on Sunday afternoon, but not, not Saturday. Nope, absolutely not. So unless it's something big, like we had a family friend who was really important to us getting married. Okay, of course, let's take care of that. Uh, family vacation, and we only do that once a year. Yes, absolutely, Saturday, all good. But 98% of the time, Saturdays are my most important day of the week. That's it, period. Um, and I guess the question I'll kind of ask here as we're kind of landing the plane is, um, would you be willing to give up Saturdays for the next two to three years if you could choose to never work a Saturday for the rest of your life? I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, would you be willing to give up Saturdays for two to three years to be able to choose your schedule for the rest of your life? To have a skill set where you're so efficient and good at what you're doing. And I'm not sitting here saying I've arrived because that's not a fact at all. I have not. Um, but to be able to be a little bit more um, intentional with your schedule and not just I'm going to work 24 seven because I got to pay the bills. It's like, okay, I got this. I know that if I get 30 appointments this week, I'm probably going to sit with 20 and I'm a self 15. And if I know that with an extreme level of confidence, my life becomes predictable. And every now and then, if I take off a Saturday, it's not the end of the world. In my first year in business, if I ever had to take off a Saturday, it was like panic mode. I'm like, oh no, I'm taking a Saturday off. How am I going to make that up? So at some point in time, you know, you'll obviously, you know, learn to make that up. But giving up two to three years of Saturdays to be able to choose to work whenever you want for the rest of your life. Um, last question we'll kind of go through is, what do you do when you have things come up in your life? Because all of us do. You know, I had two kids throughout this process of the last three years of being in business. You think I didn't want to spend, you know, two weeks with my newborn? Absolutely did. And I did. I didn't miss it. Didn't run any appointments during that time. Do you know how hard I went on the front end and the back end of that to make sure that that time I could be present and not half in, half out? Do you realize my wife and I would probably be fighting if I was half in and half out when we just had a baby? No, I'm all in. I'm right here because I was all in in the other time blocks of my life and I made sure to make up for it. Where if I'm trying to run, you know, 30 appointments a week, typically I'm running 45 appointments a week for the six weeks leading up to it and for the six weeks coming out of it because that's what it's going to take if I'm going to lose two weeks of production. But I also want to be fully present. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the holidays, Fourth of July, whatever. It feels so much better when you're sitting there eating turkey now that you just helped 10 families last week than it does if you're like, man, I just took off the last four days and I'm stuffed. And the last thing I want to do is work. But it feels so much better when you worked on Black Friday and you crushed it. When you're rolling into Christmas Eve and Christmas and New Year's having crushed it. Like it's the best feeling in the world. You're more present with your family because you did your job. Versus being the person who's like, man, I would, I should have, I, I should have, would have, could have. They can feel that stuff. Um, so things come up in your life. You can be flexible with your schedule. You know, if I have an event coming up, let's say, here's a good example. Charlotte Sales Conference is coming up this next week, 10 days from now. Um, I can set myself up for that by uh, dialing a little bit extra leading up to it. 
So I can set a few extra appointments. So now I can really load up my Friday and Saturday or, you know, I don't work Sundays, but like a, an example would be maybe, you know, you dial on a Sunday evening and you, you dial on a Monday morning and you set some Monday evening appointments and then all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, and you dial a little bit for Friday and Saturday, you skip that Thursday. There's so many different variations that you could do of this schedule. I mean, there's times when I've gotten back from a sales conference that was on a Saturday and I decided to stay in on Monday or on Sunday and get back Monday morning. And I'm like, man, by the time I get home, it's Monday afternoon. So I dialed all day Tuesday for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It was a super long dial day. It was, that's when it is. I decided to stay an extra day. So I'm going to dial my butt off on Tuesday for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, leaving some of those gaps like I talked about on like a Friday morning or a Thursday morning to be able to continue to dial and then running appointments in the rest of my gap. Or, you know, in that scenario, if I got back on a Monday night, maybe I'll just dial Tuesday for Wednesday and then go back to my normal schedule on Thursday. So there's a bunch of different ways that it can be done. But the moral of the story is that top producers, they don't sacrifice activity when something comes up in their schedule. They prepare ahead of time. I have a monthly calendar that my whole family has access to with all of our major trips, events. My wife's putting doctor's appointments on there. That happens all the time. You got kids, you got wife trying to be healthy. Like there's doctor's appointments and all kinds of things. So I got to have that scheduled out ahead of time. It's like, okay, random doctor's appointment on Tuesday morning. Okay, great. I need to make sure that I shift my schedule to make sure I still hit those production numbers. Okay, I know I said last thing like three times, but this is the last, last thing. Um, making time versus taking time. I kind of said this concept of taking time in the beginning of the call. There's a difference between making time and taking time. So we say, okay, I'll make time for that, but we don't. It's a procrastination thing. I'll make time if this happens or when I get to that point, I'll make time. We can't make any more time. I'll make time to read the books. I'll make time to work out. I'll make time to spend more time with my family if X, Y, Z happens. And trust me for experience, you won't make time for anything. Your calendar will run you. You will not make time for anything. Most of us, we live our life in a very reactive way, at least I do. And we just kind of let the wind blow us from day to day, from task to task. Um, taking time means I'm going to take time for what is most important in my life first. I'm going to take time for work and I'm going to fill in my free time last. So I'm going to take time for what's most important to me, take time for my family, take time for my business, and then fill in my free time last. So I take time for my family first because they got the crumbs for the first two years of this business. So that's just a non-negotiable for me. And I just make sure I work extra hard and focused when I am working. Again, I don't work Sundays. That's not for everybody. That's just how I do it. Sundays, I typically don't really have my phone all day. So if you guys try to hit me up on Sundays, I typically don't answer until like the late afternoon, early evening, um, when we're all done with everything that we're doing. Um, you know, I try to be intentional with the way I'm enjoying my time with my family. You know, we're serving at our church in the kids area now, something we never you know, did before. We're taking time for that because it's important. Um, you know, I take the time to block in the non-negotiable, you know, dial day blocks. So I get to the office. I've got like two calendars side by side. It's like my blocks and my appointments. So it's like, I'm taking time. This is dial time. It's blocked in. And then during that time, that's all I'm doing is dialing. Hey, for the next three hours, I'm going to dial my face off. And I'm going to fill in these blocks here that are scheduled for appointment times. And I'm not going to the gym in the middle of the day. That's a, that's a before you wake up or after most people are sleeping kind of an activity. I'm not, I put a treadmill desk underneath me because that was important to me because I wasn't going to the gym at noon. Um, I'm not going for a hike in the middle of the day. I'm not hanging out with friends on a dial day. It's just not what we do. Um, if I set all my appointments, if I hit my production number, sure, I'd love to grab dinner with some friends. I'd love to have somebody over to the house or spend extra time with my family. If I hit my numbers, that's the caveat. If I hit my numbers, most people, um, they take time for all those other things, but they don't take time for their business. They don't take time on dial day. Um, they just kind of try to make time to dial when they feel like it. And they do it in a really unorganized, unfocused way. Um, John Wetmore, he's one of our integrity partners here. Um, he has this uh, epic quote that he says, did you dial all day long or did it take you all day to dial? 
Okay. Did you dial all day long or did it take you all day to dial? It's powerful because most people just take all day to dial. And that's why they're still dialing at 8 PM. There's people on live dials who are on here at 8 PM, not because they're the most committed top producer agent. They're on here at 8 PM because they didn't start dialing until 4 PM. That's why they're on here at 8 PM. There's nothing worse than being that person who's dialing at 8 PM panicked that they're not going to have any appointments the next day. That is the absolute worst feeling in the world. The only thing I hate worse than dialing at 8 p.m. is dialing at 8 p.m. because I messed around all day. Dialing at 8 p.m. because I'm like, one more. Let's get one more appointment. Let's just get one more. Like, that's a great feeling. So I already got 16 appointments. Let's go for 17. It's 8 p.m. Let's set a new record. If I'm on at 8 p.m. because I was messing around, that doesn't feel good. So taking time to get the dialing done early. If you're setting appointments, it can be done early. You could fill it. You could be running appointments at 8 p.m. Like I would rather, I want to run appointments at 8 p.m., not set appointments at 8 p.m. That's how I, that's how my schedule is typically set up. I do a lot of same day dialing now. Dial for three hours in the morning, fill up my schedule for the rest of the day, whatever that can't happen today, but for tomorrow. So that's typically how I'm doing most of my schedule. I'm um, taking time for running appointments. Like I said, maximizing the time that we're serving clients. Um, I talked about this in the beginning of the call the beginning of your book, the end of your book, booking my 8 a.m. and my 8 p.m. first. Or if I'm dialing from 8 to noon, booking my noon and my 8 p.m. first because now I'm forced to fill in the middle. Um, Because I know, you know, I I come to my office or when I was out in the field, I'm not coming back. I'm not, if I have an 8 p.m. appointment, I'm not returning home until after that last appointment. So I'm going to maximize the work by setting myself up for success by putting myself out in the world during my time blocks. Um, So here's the deal. Um, The way we spend our time, the way that we, you know, focus um, during that time, it's obviously going to determine our results, not just in the business, but in anything in life. Um, You can ask yourself, you know, how deeply do I actually want to succeed in this career? You can ask yourself, how coachable am I? You can ask yourself, what would I be willing to give up to make it here? Um, not giving up things forever, but giving up things for a little bit, you know, what would I be willing to give up to learn the information, to make money at will and be in full control of my financial destiny? That's a great question. You should be asking yourself, you know, is that outcome worth, um, getting more strategic with how you spend your time and how you schedule your life? I think so. Um, if you don't have a calendar or a schedule at all, that's the first step. You don't need to, uh, commit to, you know, everything, but committing to tracking what you're actually going to do on a daily basis and finding the white space in your life is a pretty profound uh, thing that can happen. So you're like, man, I've been working all day. When you actually like put in the money-making activities and it's like, what did I do for the rest of the day? You'll be mind blown how much white space you have in your calendar. I'll just give you guys, I think I pulled up my schedule here from what a typical weekend can look like. Let me pull this up real quick. I just wanted to find a really good one. So this was back in June. This was Friday, starting at 10.30 a.m., one, two, three, four. And I had my video girl come in. We filmed for two hours. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10. 11 appointments after that. Scheduled in my kids' bedtime. Kids' gymnastics on Saturday. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 appointments on a Saturday. Now jump to today. Let's look at my weekend that just happened. Way more red than I want to see in my schedule. That's no shows. So that was a, not a good feeling for the weekend. But guess what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Scheduled in a date night. Marriage meeting on a Saturday. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Scheduled in bedtime. 23 appointments between Friday and Saturday. Had a date night and a marriage meeting, which that like never happens. You know, so you got to be intentional with your time ahead of time. So I can guarantee you guys, any top producer, any top agency manager, integrity partner, they have a calendar. Um, You hear people say they don't have enough time, but I guarantee if you actually just grabbed a calendar and you took the time for what's most important first and actually time blocked out your schedule, you'd see how much white space you actually have and what could be filled in with money-making activities. Um, You know, having a calendar and time blocks was something that used to stress me out. But like now it provides safety and structure for me. Um, I used to feel like I was trapped inside of a box that I was creating for myself by having a schedule. 
but now it's freed up so much mental energy about trying to figure out what to do next. The times where I've gotten the most anxious in this business have been times where I felt the most lost when I was just sitting around thinking about what I should be doing and not working. Those are the times I felt the most anxious. So a couple quotes I'll leave you guys with. Uh, the chains of worry are forged in idle hours. That one's deep. When you're not working, you have a lot of time to sit around and be anxious and think. Um, and then there's this famous general who I've studied a lot, General George Patton, who talks about you have to keep moving. He says the enemy um, is less likely to hit a moving target. If you dig a foxhole, you dig your grave. You're a sitting target. And I kind of look at that as all the worries in your life, when I dig in and do nothing, they all hit me at once. But if I keep busy, I keep moving. It's a lot harder for those anxious thoughts and those worries to hit me if I keep moving. Um, and if you want to be a top producer, um, you just have to take control of your life. And the first thing you have to take control of is your schedule. So hope everybody has an amazing night. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Charlotte Conference coming up 10 days from now. I'd love to see you there. Everybody have an amazing night. We'll be on here. We got appointments probably till 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Eastern time tonight for a lot of us. So hope everyone has an amazing night and we'll talk to you all soon. Have a good one.